So, I'm talking about a topic today that I would have never imagined me talking about, let alone have the balls to talk about it, but realizing that the only way for me to be in my fullest expression and to create that true sense of fulfillment is to talk about the things that are on my path and on my journey. So today I felt really called, this has been kind of like ruminating within me for a while, but I felt really called to pick up the camera and talk about sex and shame and specifically how they both intertwine and how everybody actually feels this to a level, but specifically people who are maybe from a more conservative culture or maybe have had past conditioning or even trauma or abuse or just bad experiences could be, I guess, for lack of better words, victims of shame or have experienced this in some capacity. And I felt really, really called to talk about this more openly because it is actually a big part of my theme and my life journey in this chapter of life that I uncover. So I want to give you a little bit of a background as far as CX and how it has evolved in my lifetime. So I come from an Indian background. My parents are Indian, and this is a very conservative culture, um, which is funny because actually in many teachings, there is the Kama Sutra teaching. And when you look into a lot of these cultural practices, it's actually a culture that really appreciates and sees the divinity in sex and spiritual practices such as sex. But I'll get into this a little bit later as far as how we can actually view sex to be probably the most spiritual practice for us and how different cultures have interpreted the divinity within this practice. But for the time being, if you were not familiar, there's many cultures on the other side of the world, especially that have a lot of barriers up and don't really encourage people to be fully expressive in this way, let alone do they accept people to explore their sexuality or encourage it. It's kind of just something you do to have a kid and it's not really talked about. It's kind of this like secret mystical thing that only happens when a male and female are married and there's really no progression there. It's it's just really not talked about. And even if you watch, you know, Indian movies, let's say, it'll get right up close to maybe when they'll kiss, but there's not even any kissing. So, you know, I remember growing up watching American movies, but my parents just kind of feeling super awkward around the kissing scenes and then like not being able to watch anything that was like romantic in that way. Um, and when my parents were married, they're divorced now, there wasn't really any affection like that shown or encouraged around my brother and I as well. And it was always just kind of squeamish as far as like seeing any public displays of affection. So, I didn't realize this growing up, but it did really cause a lot of conditioning and shame and just like feeling guilty and really actually blocking me out from fully expressing and feeling into my emotions, which relates to a few other things. And then also that your emotions go hand in hand with your pleasure and so when you can't fully express and feel into your emotions, you can't fully express and feel into your pleasure. And they both go hand in hand. And so there is a good chunk of my life where even if I was having sex, I was not accessing the state of pleasure or even able to feel, um, you know, how it is creating this beautiful euphoric feeling that everyone talks about. So growing up, this was something that... Um, that I had to kind of process and journey through, but it wasn't something that was ever encouraged to talk about. So I don't know about you guys, you guys can let me know, but especially amongst girls, um, talking in depth about your sex life or different insecurities or different things of like shame or guilt. I maybe think this is common between men and women because when you're younger, you still have a lot of unshedding of your ego to be doing and you might be in a place where you're feeling really insecure. 
So for you to even be vulnerable and share amongst your friends, that could be really hard. And I don't think most people find that connection with their friends until their 20s and 30s and sometimes like never because I see many people who are friends these days, but they're still putting up a wall and they wanna come across their best self instead of their most vulnerable self and opening up about these things. So all that goes to say that I was never able to actually um, open up in this way until recently now at 25 years old where I'm actually talking about these things out loud, which is kind of crazy because that's a lot of life to live where that like you're like suppressing this whole huge part of you. All right. So the next thing that I want to talk about, because I made a few notes and there's a lot of things to go through as far as sex and shame. All right. Birth control. So if you guys have heard me talk about this before, I am a big advocate of getting off of birth control because especially for women on birth control that's hormonal, it can greatly affect your libido and your sex drive. And so not to get too much into it, but it can actually, because it's literally altering your your hormones and your hormones are a huge driver of your health, your attraction, and just how you go about your daily life and it even affects your brain it can affect the person that you mate with the person you're attracted to and then of course it's affecting your sex drive and your libido so going on birth control at age 18 really just messed up a lot of things for me and not everyone experiences this but it does greatly affect your hormones and your brain which is why i'm bringing it up similarly to birth control your food like if you're not actually eating healthy that can also create a lot of discomfort so anything that's not giving your body and your brain complete peace these are all things that are going to be causing discomfort for you and then that can affect so many other things in your life um as far as birth control um i've talked about this in previous podcasts but to touch on this a little bit unfortunately for many of us especially younger women it doesn't always feel like you have a choice it just feels like oh i'm having sex now this is something i need to do to not have a baby there's no other options and we're not feeling empowered at all to actually look into other options and so when that happens, you're already feeling kind of like icky about it. I had one friend that had openly talked to me about this, uh, not even super open. I mean, when I say open, we openly said, hey, we should probably get on birth control. Let's make a secret appointment at Planned Parenthood and go make our appointments. And we were each other's moral support, but we still didn't really actually talk about anything in our sex lives. It was just moral support, buddy. Let's go to Planned Parenthood. But we were kind of fueling each other to keep this as a secret because we weren't open about this with our parents. And so that itself, just anything that you're hiding and lying about is shit. And so now looking back, I'm like, wow, like from the get go, I was training myself to feel super guilty and just icky about this. So while I was on birth control, again, it wasn't a it wasn't a decision that I made that I felt super at peace with. And also I started to resent it so much because it affected my mood. It affected my libido. It actually made me gain weight. It just made me so unhappy that I was just so dang mad and frustrated all the time and the relationship I was in at that time when I was so young I felt like I just kind of had to have sex because that's what you do so my first ex- my first few experiences with sex was just very like all right this is something you do because you got to do it and I'm hating myself and I'm like just feeling so depressed I was literally feeling in a state of depression from the pill most likely and then there's just this repressed feeling of an act that's supposed to be so beautiful and so vulnerable and instead i'm just like all right gotta do it gotta do it because you're in a relationship and there's all those fears and insecurities that come around it right for men and women because they have that pressure to perform but also if you're not actually giving your partner sex you're biggest fear is going to be like oh they're going to find this somewhere else whether that's just porn which for many people that can actually you know some people are okay with it some people aren't and then for some other people it's actually like physically cheating and so 
that's a whole different topic. That's really up to you and your partner and just to have a conversation with yourself on what you feel about those things and where your boundaries lie. But the point of this is that that fear of, oh my gosh, they're going to want to get this from someone else, that becomes a really big internal pressure on you. And so again, you're not even able to get into that meditative state of like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for sex. It feels so good. This is like a beautiful thing I'm going to do with whether it's your partner or whether it's just whoever, like even if it's a one-time thing, it can be super beautiful, but you're not even able to access that state. And when you're so young, it doesn't feel like you have a choice. And then also everyone has different resources available to them. So at this time, I didn't even like have access to podcasts where we could listen to people talking about their sex lives or sex tips or even how sex could be so sacred and spiritual. All right, so another thing I wanna address because this is a big part of shame and as I dive deeper into our primal roots and primal living, this is a huge, huge thing that should actually feel really good, which is basically survival of the fittest, right? So survival of the fittest is basically the sense that, you know, we are animals and all animals are on this planet to procreate to make more babies, to continue our species. So regardless of whether you want to have a baby or not, it is literally in our programming and our biology to want to have sex and to want to do the things that make us the more, most reproductively healthy. So that's eating you know, food and feeling super nourished because if we're not healthy, if we're not getting the nutrients that we need, if we're not signaling safety to the brain, our body is going to shut off any libido or sex drive because it doesn't feel safe to procreate, especially as a woman. If you're starving yourself, your sex drive is probably going to suffer a lot because your body doesn't feel safe to hold a baby in it. It doesn't even have enough nutrients to support a baby. So your safety signal is going to be shutting off sex drive. And so that was another thing. I went through really unhealthy patterns of binge eating and a horrible relationship with food. So I was always in a state of lack and restriction. So my body and brain just didn't feel safe enough at all to even want to have sex. So it could have been birth control. It could have been me being on the vegan diet for years. It could have been me just in this restrictive feeling and then also all the cultural shame so all of this is like all of the recipes for disaster as far as just being completely shut off from sex it was like I was doing everything and I was like being conditioned in this way that was like hey you shouldn't be having sex and you should be feeling horrible around it so anyways coming back to primal roots It is in our nature. So that's the biggest thing for you. Any like shame or guilt you're feeling around this, realize that you as a homo sapiens species, it is in your nature to want to have sex because that means you are procreating or you're creating that potential. Also, um, it's also in your nature to want to look good and feel good. And that's not the topic. That's not the main thing I'm covering in this this conversation. But I feel like it's very important to address because a lot of us are like, oh, you shouldn't care about looking good in front of people. But that's why peacocks have feathers and lions have manes and all of these different features to enhance ourselves because it is in our nature to want to look good for someone else because that means potential to have sex basically is what it is and that kind of sounds blunt but we also have relationships we have families we have all of these other complexities now so it's not just like oh I want to have sex with this person to procreate. It's not as simple. We have so many more other things like love, like love is so beautiful and we get to access this and have that be a part of all of the layers. And that's where, I mean, I'll touch on a little bit as far as the love component and the spirituality component of sex, but primal roots, it's in our DNA and biology to want to have sex. So stop feeling like it's something that is not meant to be. This is something that the culture that I'm from made it just seem like a forbidden thing that doesn't exist when actually sex is life. It's literally 
how life is created. It's like the epitome of experiencing life, you could say, is actually sex. And I'm already getting into the spirituality and the meaning of life and the sex and everything, but it it, it is true. So coming back to, I mentioned this a little bit before, it was a line, it was a quote that I saw, and I'm not quoting this exactly, but it was basically your ability to feel pleasure is based on your ability to really experience and access your emotions. So what does that mean? That means that if you are suppressing and not actually facing up to your emotions, like let's say you have anger, you have sadness, maybe you have guilt, maybe you are just not allowing your emotions to surface and you're not creating this outlet, then you're not actually facing up to them and experiencing them. And so that is going to hand in hand affect your ability to feel pleasure because you can't just decide to feel pleasure and then decide not to feel all the other feelings that are not so great in life, right? You, can, you can't just say, I'm not going to feel the anger. I'm not going to feel the sadness. I'm going to feel the other things. And maybe you still can. Maybe you still feel like a release when you have sex and you still feel horny, but the true pleasure that feels just so good for you might not be able to be fully accessed if you're not allowing yourself to feel all the other emotions and so what goes hand in hand with feeling emotions it's vulnerability and that has been such a big theme for me and it's something i've been focusing on and so vulnerability is really just allowing yourself to fully feel and be held without holding back, without the fear. We're so scared and fearful of rejection, of getting our hearts broken, of course, and maybe even abandonment. Um, And so when we feel this, it doesn't allow us to be fully vulnerable because we don't feel safe. And when we're vulnerable, regardless if we feel safe or not, we're deciding to open up and just be. And most of us get our vulnerability shut down at such a young age or maybe during our first heartbreak because we're facing and getting faced with, yeah, true rejection and abandonment. And it's funny because growing up, especially through high school and college years, I was like, I don't have daddy issues. I don't sleep around. And I took pride in that. And it was only said and thought that the people who slept around a bunch are the ones with maybe daddy issues. And I was like, well, I do have, you know, a lot of back and forth. It's been a roller coaster as far as the relationship with my dad, but I don't have daddy issues because they're not manifesting like this. And then little did I realize that my feeling of abandonment and my feeling of feeling like someone was just always in control and also suppressing my emotions and not empowering me to actually cry, that did so much and it put up the biggest block. And when I look at the relationship I was in, the relationships I like was in throughout my entire life, like Every person has been so beautiful and so amazing, but I never let myself feel fully open because I would always have that barrier up. And I really didn't even realize this until a few months ago doing more of the work because I was like, what do you mean? I'm with you. I'm being vulnerable. I'm being open. I'm sharing my life with you. But truly letting your heart be open to someone like that is a whole nother level of vulnerability. It's like totally giving your heart to someone knowing that there's a chance that you could be completely heartbroken. And that is like such the, such a beautiful thing about love, but it is also the scariest thing about love. And these are all things that I just couldn't fully comprehend until experiencing like my first love and experiencing what was holding me back and experiencing the consequences of not being vulnerable and having a love where you're holding back and you're not fully sharing that way. And what happens is when you don't allow yourself to just fully let all the emotions manifest, it can turn into anxiety attacks, which it did for me, or it can turn into hiding in secrets, or it can turn into just a mistrust with the other person, even if either person wasn't doing anything mistrustful. 
I don't know if that's a word mistrustful. But there's just a lot of things that it can turn into. And so reeling it back into actual sex and shame, when you have sex, you are allowing yourself to be so vulnerable and completely let go and just surrender to the moment. Um, and for the longest time, any time I would have sex, I was just completely checked out and I wasn't able to be present. I was so focused on other things, so focused on work, so focused on my insecurity within myself that there was no way I could even get close to feeling pleasure because I was so unhappy with myself and I just wasn't able to release the shame because it already felt like such a dirty, just like shameful act that I had to hide. Um, I think finally being able to, to when you finally move out of your parents' house, that's obviously a huge step because just, you know, being around that can be very, very weird for you and for many people. But aside from that, realizing like actually it can take a lot of a process it could take a big process to get yourself to be in a state of calm and peace and surrender and another thing especially with women you might have heard of this but for majority of women a lot of women more than we think aren't actually orgasming because we have a pressure to you know rush with everything and even if it takes us more time to actually get into that place of relax before we can actually start to tap into those feelings of pleasure and bliss with sex, most of us don't acknowledge that time or we feel like we're just being rushed. And I'm not even saying it's the other person person rushing. You could have a partner that's all about pleasuring you. But if you're feeling that just like, oh, I need to rush through this because it's such a guilty act and I feel so shameful around it. It's like you're not even going to allow yourself to tap into those feelings of pleasure. So really deconstructing and de-patterning this is huge. So let me collect myself back in together. I'm going to start tapping into the spirituality and actually what it's like to restructure what sex can be like for you because all of this time we were taught that oh my gosh it's such a dirty act i'm sure all through high school it's like the biggest fear oh my gosh we can't get pregnant oh my gosh use birth control oh my gosh this is so secretive because our parents would kill us if they found out and then later on slowly starting to explore but then maybe you're in a relationship that doesn't feel right um I know for women, sometimes if the man you're with or the other partner you're with is not maybe focused on pleasuring you and it's kind of a one-way street, that's super common and most of us don't think to question that. And then maybe you do find a partner that is super open to pleasuring you and then you're still feeling uncomfortable because of your own insecurities. And so finding a partnership where you feel truly safe is beautiful and Obviously, I'm being biased here. I think when you have that one partner, um, at least for a given period of time where you can openly talk about this because that's what it takes in a relationship. It takes time and trust building to be able to open up about these vulnerable things. I'm guessing the average person, the very first time they have sex with someone, whether it's a one night stand or just like the first time in general, they're probably not going into their deepest, darkest insecurities, especially on the topic of sex. But what's really Really beautiful is when you have that sacred partnership for however long it is whoever it is whatever gender they are and you're with them for a given period of time you can ask each other things and maybe you feel comfortable asking like hey I'm feeling really stressful or I'm feeling a lot of shame and I need you know a uh, some extra time to prep myself and meditate and maybe do some breath work to get into a place of more bliss so I can fully surrender in the moment when we are actually having sex. And that can look really different for a lot of people. I think with any practice that I'm doing, whether it's yoga and exercise or even for my work or for whatever it is, breath work is one of those things that immediately shifts your state. Um, but even just breathing, putting on good music, 
setting the vibe whether it's candles these are all things that are actually not stupid guys they're actually like really important and i think setting the mood and doing all of the things needed to get yourself into that state of calm so you're not feeling just super like weird about it and you're like fully calming your parasympathetic nervous system so it's like all right body and brain this is something that's safe it's gonna feel really really good to do and i'm giving you pleasure i'm able to feel pleasure i'm able to fully receive the pleasure i'm fully worthy of pleasure all of these things are important and even if you cry like allowing yourself to cry and again this is another reason why having that sacred partnership with someone that you're having sex with can be beautiful because you're creating so much more depth and it can quite literally allow you guys to expand in so many more ways rather than it's not just about sex and that was like the biggest thing for me is like i thought sex was just a a side thing on a relationship or just in life forget the relationship i just thought like oh you know sex is an optional thing we don't really have to do it but when we are not really addressing our sexual desires we are literally um not acknowledging our biology so also in a relationship sex is going to be huge and so if you get into this pattern of like i don't have enough time i have a headache i have work to do i just feel super stressed i don't feel like it but that compounds and it starts feeling like a chore, especially if maybe you've had a partner in the past that was really making it one-sided, which I've definitely had before where it was all about the guy and it was like barely focused on any pleasure towards the woman, aka me. That just made it such a ingrained habit in my head that this was just going to be a chore. And so when I finally did experience a relationship where he was so focused on pleasuring me and I was like, this is so different, but I just had it ingrained in my head like, oh my gosh, I can't even allow myself to receive this pleasure right now and be in the moment because it's all about the guy all the time or whoever the partner is. I'm obviously talking about um, you know, heterosexual relationships as far as my experience because I can't really speak on the others. But basically, feeling into that and feeling into how can sex be so much more expansive than just physical pleasure because if you think about what sex is it's literally the epitome of creation and i have to keep saying this again and again it doesn't matter if you're actually wanting kids or not but it is something that can be a creative life force energy. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that uh, when you are accessing this state, um, in a podcast I was listening to, they call it your internal bliss chemistry. So you actually have this that you can access with or without a partner, but it's your internal bliss chemistry. And if you think about it, all we want as humans, that ultimate state of euphoria is actually bliss. Um, and so when you're able to actually view it as that, think about it. If you're experiencing bliss, if you're experiencing this ultimate creative energy, think about how much that's going to expand all of the other aspects of your life. It's like you're trying so hard to thrive in your business. You're trying so hard to thrive in just your relationship and your friendships, but then you're suppressing you know your sex life basically and you're not actually realizing that that is a priority and that is something that can actually expand you in all of the other things too so changing your perspective so obviously we're releasing the shame we're releasing the guilt but now we're viewing it as like actually a priority in our life can we actually prioritize sex and make it something where it's expanding us and maybe expanding whether it's your one partner or whatever you're choosing can it be something that's energetically expanding both of you um so i'm gonna speak on an experience i had last year which was absolutely insane probably the most 
insane experience I've endured in my life. And it's simply because I think I experienced all that life is within a few minutes. And I've referenced this experience in a few different podcasts and a few different experiences, but this is really going to drive this conversation home. And it's what's making so much sense. It's where everything's tying in together. And keep in mind, this experience is more than a year ago. It was February of 2021. And it's now May of 2022. So I had my first DMT experience um, last year, February 2020. And I had no idea what to expect. And everyone goes to different depths of it. But I feel like I honestly went to like the deepest place possible. And it was a very short amount of time. But basically what happened was that my breath and my entire being and everything just synced up as a whole. I was just seeing energy. But what happened was actually my breath started turning into moans, which is crazy. But when we talk about all we have to do in this life is just be, all that there is left is breath and that is the rhythm of life. So that's why in yoga, when they talk about prana, Prana is your life force energy. So all I was experiencing that time was my breath, which turned into deeper moans. And it basically sounded like what happens when you orgasm. And I felt like the feeling of being given birth to, like I was a baby coming out of a mom's womb. And I also felt like I was giving birth as well. So I felt like I was in this midway of the ultimate creation, like the portal. I was experiencing the portal on both sides, right? Coming out of a portal and then having something come out of my portal, basically. And it made me realize this thing that we shame so much is actually the complete access to life. It is probably the most powerful, the most spiritual thing ever because it is the epitome of creation. And obviously, every time people are having sex, they're not having a baby, but they are creating this internal bliss chemistry or they're they're creating this creative life force energy that you're accessing. So rather than having sex be something that's so shameful that you feel so guilty about, What if you viewed it as the most sacred act ever, the most sacred act that you could do and something that was so spiritual? Because just think about that. Like when you were having sex, you are accessing such a deep state of bliss. And this is obviously if you are, you know, releasing the acts, the the feelings of shame and guilt and all of the suppressive feelings. But if you're completely in full surrender and if you're feeling that full feeling of bliss and pleasure, isn't that the most divine feeling ever? It's 11-11 right now. So isn't that the most like amazing, amazing feeling ever? And think about every time, not every time. I mean, it's okay to, you know, when you have sex, like sometimes it's just a quickie. Sometimes it's just for fun. Sometimes you just have that like lust and passion. But other times, what if you went into it with the feeling of how can this be so expansive, so energetically transformative? How can it literally shift and create huge ripple effects between me and this person and then everything outside of it in our realm and reality. It's so powerful. And so this is the thing that I'm slowly accessing. And, you know, I go by the name Primal Yogi and it was kind of something that just came to me, but the deeper and deeper I do the work, the more I resonate with it, which is pretty freaking cool because There's so many ancient scriptures and one of them being the yoga sutras, which is what yogic philosophy is stemming from. And it's where I use a lot of those practices to lead me in daily life and integrate. But another ancient scripture in Sanskrit is the Kama Sutra. And 
you can think of that as the art of sex where it's going through different positions and talking about different things. And a lot of these scriptures, unfortunately, have been misinterpreted. However, just the mere fact alone that the Indian culture that I started this conversation off of talking about how much it suppresses and how much it's conservative and how much it actually doesn't encourage people to tap into their sexuality, the very same culture actually has scriptures on viewing this as such a beautiful divine sacred act and what if at that point where you are literally having sex and you're creating that sacred union with a person that you are both becoming like one because you're accessing each other's souls in that way and you're able to actually see the divine in your person and this really taps into relationships because a lot of times and so easy to get into relationship arguments and issues and breakups and divorces and all of the things. And relationships are like the hardest thing these days because especially as we progress as a culture, females are feeling more empowered and roles are switching in the home place and all of the things. But we are put in this place where we're just expecting something of our partner or it's a one way street and it's like, you have your shit, I have my shit and we're just separate. And how many of you listening actually can view your partner as God, as the divine. And you don't have to believe in God, but you can say the universe. So like, let's say you're seeing your partner right now. Can you look at them and see the freaking universe? Wouldn't that be beautiful to have a sacred union where you look at your person and you're like, uh, I see the universe in you because you are so divine. And when I get to connect you, connect with you in the deepest way possible that we can possibly physically connect literally being inside of each other like couldn't that be such a beautiful connected experience and obviously there's so many ways we can get into this and talk about it and if you're actually exploring different ways of breathing with each other eye gazing slowly caressing like all of these amazing things that you can do while you're having sex or maybe even before sex to get into this connected state but even before that right like just switching to this view of sex to be something so sacred and beautiful regardless if you have a baby or not it's something that is really awakening this creative life force energy and when you realize that your connection and your body and your energy is so much greater than what you think is yourself and it's so much bigger than this then you realize and you start to let go of all the feelings of shame and guilt and weirdness around it because this has just become something so much bigger than yourself and you are literally creating more vibration with the earth and the universe what the actual fuck all right I don't know if I'm going to be continuing to make sense because as I go down the the path of spirituality and the divine and the connectedness, this is something that you can tap into with breath work, with meditation, and just even just starting the conversation off with your soulmate or your partner or whoever you are wanting to have sex with or whoever you're having sex with. But it's really beautiful to open up these conversations. Another thing is that I talked about at the beginning how I just never felt safe to actually speak with my friends on sex. And so Now I'm at a place where it's actually really freaking cool. I've attracted a tribe of friends and even people on this virtual platform who like get me. They understand. And I see some of your guys' comments right now and like you guys feel me on this sacred union and this being more of a divine act. And so the more you are on your purpose and you're talking about these things out loud, there's a lot of friends you might have or people around you who might not feel comfortable with what you're talking about they might not be ready for it but the more you put yourself out there the more you literally attract into your life that are on your wavelength and that's just the only way guys so i can't stress that enough because having a support system as you're going through this journey which can be a very freaking difficult journey you might go through heartbreak you might go through breakup you might go through having your heart fucking crushed and smashed on the ground you might go through a lot of sexual disappointment you might go through periods of pleasure you might go through periods of really feeling really uncomfortable with yourself because you're doing something that you're so not used to you might go through all of these different things 
but it's so worth it. And having those people that you can open up to or at least feel relatable with you is really important. If you don't quite have that yet, you're still sending like these messages out to the universe, right? So just you absorbing this information can be amazing. I have created a playlist on Spotify where I have compiled so many podcasts I've listened to on the relationships, on the topic of relationships and sex specifically. So if you are interested in that playlist, just comment with your email and I will email you the playlist. I think that's the best way to go. Uh, and this will also be uploaded on YouTube so I can include that playlist in my YouTube bio, which will have all of the different podcasts that I'm mentioning because I've listened to, I think, a good amount of hours of podcasts just on sex alone. And now, now that I've kind of become at peace with that, I'm really diving into the spirituality component. So it's beautiful to go back into my like yogic teachings and actually view it from a lens of not shutting out sex because a lot of religions have kind of like misinterpreted uh different teachings and so that's why like abstinence is huge and it's like ah don't do that but if you actually think about like why people are remaining abstinent then you can realize maybe you don't have to specifically wait until marriage but maybe it is finding that sacred union partner because if you're opening up this beautiful creative life force energy with someone maybe you want someone that you truly feel committed to and i might just being being like must be being biased but i I'm guessing the average person's not going to meet a random person on the street and immediately feel super trusting and vulnerable and open with them. So whoever your sacred partner is or your partner in life, open up that conversation and maybe see if this is something that you guys are both willing to explore. Because like I was talking about, this is not only going to expand you as a person, but it's also going to expand so much if you're running a business, if you are working a career, if you know, even how you feel about yourself, your body image, how you manage your emotions, this is all so connected. It's something that I put off to the side for so goddamn long. And now realizing it's actually one of the most important things that I want to commit most of my time to. And I'm not saying I want to spend most of my time having sex during the day. But I am saying that I am really trying to access more of my feelings, my emotions, my vulnerability, and my pleasure. Because if I can't feel pleasure during you know, sex, how can I feel that ultimate pleasure with anything at all? And that's when we create more of that rhythm with life. All right, guys. That is the conversation today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to be uploading this again to the YouTube. I will include the playlist I talk about where I have all the podcasts on sexy time. And not just sex, but like sacred sex and that sacred union and connection. Um, let me know if you want to hear more about this. I'm literally, this is just a recent chapter and theme in my life, but I feel super called to it. And again, I mentioned at the beginning of this conversation that it's probably the thing that I thought I would never talk about. And it's probably becoming one of the things that I am most talking about. So how about that? Um, I love you. If you were part of this conversation for even just a few minutes, Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And if you're catching the replay, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're tuning on in on the YouTube, I would appreciate a subscribe and a like and support. And if you're here on the Instagram, sharing this to someone you think would really appreciate this once the replay is up, because this message needs to be, it needs to be spread because of how much it's been suppressed. I love you.